This episode of Into the Music is brought to you by Coda Music. It's a great way to discover new music and listen to all of your favorite artists for free. The link is in the description. In today's episode we're going to explore Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is that rarest of pop phenomena, a superstar who managed to completely cross over from country to the mainstream. Others have performed similar moves, notably, Dolly Parton and Willie Nelson both became enduring pop culture icons based on their 70s work, but Swift shed her country roots like they were a second skin, it was a necessary molting to reveal she was perhaps the sharpest, savviest populist singer slash songwriter of her generation, one who could harness the zeitgeist, make it personal and, just as impressively, perform the reverse. These skills were evident on her earliest hits, especially the neo-tribute Tim McGraw, but her second album, 2008's Fearless, showcased a songwriter discovering who she was and, in the process, finding a mass audience. Fearless wound up having considerable legs not only in the US, where it racked up six platinum singles on the strength of the top 10 hits Love Story and You Belong With Me, but throughout the world, performing particularly well in the UK, Canada, and Australia. Speak Now, delivered almost two years later, consolidated that success and moved Swift into the stratosphere of superstardom. Her popularity only increased over her next three albums, Red 2012, 1989-2014, Reputation 2017, and found her moving assuredly into a pop realm where she already belonged. This sense of confidence had been apparent in Taylor Swift since the beginning. The daughter of two bankers, her father, Scott Kingsley Swift, worked at Merrill Lynch, her mother, Andrea, spent time as a mutual fund marketing executive, Swift was born in Reading, Pennsylvania, and raised in suburban Wyoming. She began to show interest in music at the age of 9, and Shania Twain wound up as her biggest formative influence. Swift started to work regularly at local talent contests, eventually winning a chance to open for Charlie Daniels. Soon, she learned how to play guitar and began writing songs, signing a music management deal with Dan Dimtro her family relocated to Nashville with the intent of furthering her music career. She was just 14 years old but on the radar of the music industry, signing a development deal with RCA Records in 2004. Swift sharpened her skills with a variety of professional songwriters, forming the strongest connections with Liz Rose. Taylor S. original songs earned her a deal with Sony ATV Music Publishing, but not long after that 2004 deal she parted ways with Dimtro and RCA all with the intent of launching her recording career now, not later. Things started moving swiftly once Swift came to the attention of Scott Borchetta, a former DreamWorks Records exec about to launch Big Machine Records. Borchetta saw Swift perform at a songwriter's showcase at the Bluebird Cafe and he signed her to Big Machine in 2005. Shortly afterward, she started work on her debut with producer Nathan Chapman, who'd previously helmed demos for Taylor. Boasting original song credits on every one of the record's 11 songs she pinned three on her own, Taylor Swift appeared in October 2006 to strong reviews and Swift made sure to work the album hard, appearing at every radio or television event offered and marshalling a burgeoning fan base through the use of MySpace. Tim McGraw, the first song from the album, did well, but Teardrops on My Guitar and Our Song did better on both the pop and country charts, where she racked up five consecutive top 10 singles. Other successes followed in the wake of the debut, a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist she lost to Amy Winehouse, stopgap EPs of Christmas songs, but Swift concentrated on delivering her sophomore set, Fearless. Appearing in November 2008, Fearless was certified gold by the RIAA in its first week of release, and the record gained momentum throughout 2009, earning several platinum certifications as Love Story, White Horse, You Belong With Me, 15, and Fearless all scaled the upper reaches of the country charts while You Belong With Me nearly topped Billboard's Hot 100. Along with the success came some headlines, first in the form of an infamous appearance at the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards where her acceptance speech was interrupted by Kanye West, who burst on stage to declare that Swift's rival Beyonce deserved the award more, but her romances also started gaining attention, notably a liaison with Twilight star Taylor Lautner who appeared with the singer in the 2009 film Valentine's Day. Her flirtation with the silver screen proved brief, as she then poured herself into her third album, Speak Now. 
Released in October 2010, Speak Now was another massive first week smash that refused to lose momentum. Hit singles like Mine and Mean, which won two Grammy Awards, played a big factor in its success not just on the country charts but on pop radio as well. Following a 2011 live album called World Tour Live, Speak Now, Swift turned toward following a pop path on her fourth album, hiring such mainstream musicians as Dan Wilson, Butch Walker, and Britney Spears producer Max Martin. This mainstream pulse was evident on We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, the first single from Red. Upon its October 2012 release, Red shattered expectations by selling over a million copies in its first week, a notable achievement that was doubly impressive in an era of declining sales. Once again, Swift's album had legs, it was certified platinum four times in the US and its international sales outstripped those of Speak Now. She supported Red with an international tour in 2013 and more hits came, including I Knew You Were Trouble in 22. As Swift geared up for the release of her fifth album in 2014, she made it clear that 1989 was designed as her first documented, official pop album and that there would be no country marketing push for the record. Shake It Off, an ebullient dance pop throwback, hit number one upon its August 2014 release. When 1989 appeared in late October 2014, it once again shot to number one and became her third straight album to sell one million copies in its first week and new record for any artist. Swift gathered many awards during the subsequent year, including Billboard's Woman of the Year, the award for excellence at the American Music Awards, and a special 50th anniversary milestone award from the CMAs. Her 1989 world tour across Asia, North America, and Europe during the last half of 2015, and she won three Grammy Awards at the 2016 ceremonies, including Album of the Year, Best Pop Vocal Album, and Best Music Video for Bad Blood. At the end of 2016, she released I Don't Wanna Live Forever, a duet with Zayn from the soundtrack for Fifty Shades Darker. The single reached the top five across the world. Swift returned with her sixth album, Reputation, in November 2017. Preceded by the number one hit single Look What You Made Me Do, Reputation debuted at number one, and while it didn't replicate the success of 1989, the album did help underscore her popularity while also pushing her toward mature musicality. Reputation was Swift's final record for Big Machine. In November 2018, she signed with Universal Music Group, who distributed her new albums under their Republic Records banner. The first album in this contract was Lover. Released in August 2019, Lover was preceded by two singles, me. And You Need to Calm Down, which both reached number 2 on the Hot 100 and helped push the album to number 1. The acclaimed LP and two of its singles received a total of three nominations at the 62nd Grammy Awards. Swift has plans to support Lover with a tour in 2020 were scrapped to do the COVID-19 pandemic. With some unexpected time on her hands, she wrote and recorded a new set of songs, many in collaboration with Aaron Dessner of The National, Bon Iver and longtime Swift associate Jack Antonoff also contributed. The resulting album, entitled Folklore, was released on July 24, 2020.